man, you guys are such fanboys. Look at that. All right, so we get to pick. Okay, hi, my name's Chad. All right, that's, a, okay. Does this still work? Okay, so I started a website called Gitip, and people like to call it uh, GitTip, but I like to call it Gitip now. Um, right, so what I want to talk about this morning is three things. I want to talk about the what of GitTip. See? GitHub, the what of GitHub, in case anybody's totally new to it, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the why of GitHub, and then uh, finish with the so what of GitHub. Um, but first, I want to touch on two things uh, before we do that. So first of all, I just want to say thank you, because uh, the Python community has been really receptive to GitHub, and a huge part of GitHub's success so far since we launched last summer. Uh, so actually, really, really appreciate that you are here and that you're using GitHub if you're using GitHub. So thank you, I really appreciate it. Um, all right, the other thing I want to talk about is the name. <sighs> all right, so the name is GitHub. And you know, when, when I launched it nine months ago or whatever, it seemed like a really good name, right? Because it was like tip jar for GitHub, right? But now it's sort of taken on a life of its own and it's much bigger than just GitHub and just Git which is why I'm trying to pronounce it GitHub to differentiate it from this other website, GitHub, right? GitHub, of course, is, uh, right? So GitHub is named after Git, the version control system. You know, so you have the original thing and then GitHub and then GitHub. So th the way that I sort of make sense of this is on the analogy with uh, Wikipedia, right? Another big site that you may have heard of. So Wikipedia, does anybody remember uh, or know who invented the wiki? Ward Come on, Ward Cunningham, yes, right? At c2.com, right? Portland Pattern Repository. So this is the, let's see if my laser pointer works. Yeah, so this is the wonderful logo. This, uh, this actually says wiki wiki web on it, so that's the logo of the original wiki. So you have the original wiki in the 90s, Ward Cunningham, then you have Wikipedia come along and sort of popularize the concept, and then you have WikiLeaks come along, right? And it's like WTF, like it's not really a wiki, you know? Why is it called WikiLeaks? It just confuses people who don't know any better uh, with Wikipedia. So in both cases, you've got sort of the original name, then you've got the popular name, and then you've got the oh no, what have we done, gah, it's too late name, right? <laughs> So GitHub falls in that latter category. So basically you can think of GitHub as GitHub's, what's that? It's, yes, it's the WikiLeaks of crowdfunding. GitHub is GitHub's WikiLeaks. Once again, proving Barry Warsaw's fifth law that all names are stupid until you become rich and famous with it, also known as the Pink Floyd rule, right? All right, so just call it GitHub and let's move on with life. So what is it? GitHub is, uh, oh yeah, here we are. This is my business card, by the way, right? I was handing them out earlier. Um, if you didn't get one, you can get one afterwards. Or we actually have a booth out in the expo hall where uh, we're manufacturing these on site. Um, so come and hang out and talk more about GitHub afterwards. Right, okay, so now what is it? Uh, GitHub is a crowdfunding platform that's designed for sustainable crowdfunding, right? So with Kickstarter, you get a one-time shot in the arm. With GitHub, it's ongoing weekly sustainable crowdfunding. So this shows, uh, this chart here is showing that GitHub has been around for 41 weeks. It runs every week, so every Thursday we, I run a script and it charges people's credit cards and puts out to people's bank accounts. And yesterday we moved to $2,000. Uh, yeah! So that's a little bit of a milestone for us. Um, so you can see that we're growing again in the past couple months. So this is kind of the thing we track to see uh, how the system is growing, how much dollar volume is going through it each week. So this is what a specific profile looks like on GitHub, and this is the one for Read the Docs, uh, right? People are familiar with Read the Docs. Uh, Eric Holscher uh, got on six months ago, and he's basically paying for his hosting costs uh, for Read the Docs from his GitHub account. 
So the way it works is you go to one of these profiles and you set it up with a, a small weekly cash gift. So you click one of these buttons, you set up, say I want to give Eric a dollar a week. And the thing about it is it's anonymous. So Eric doesn't actually know who the 80 people are that are giving to him or the 60 people are that are giving to him or whatever. And that frees him up uh, you know, from having to uh, you know, be micromanaged, right? I sort of, I don't know, I think of, well yeah, let's get that. So it's anonymous gifts, it's no strings attached on both sides. So you're sort of giving Eric something because you're inspired by what he's doing and you love what he's doing and you're saying, look, I love what you're doing, I want you to keep doing it, no strings attached, right? So if you wake up tomorrow and you think that what the world needs for you to do is to quit everything and go play golf, then go do that. And it's no strings attached on both sides, right? So Eric is free to do that, and then you're free to withdraw your gift at that point, right? Uh, if you don't think that Eric needs to go play golf for the world. Um, right, so sustainable, ongoing, recurring, no strings attached gifts. That's the basis of GitHub. All right. So that was an individual profile. You can give to anybody uh, who doesn't have a GitHub account, but does have, for example, a Twitter account, right? So this is Oprah's Twitter account on GitHub. And for some reason, zero people are ready to give to Oprah. Uh, I don't know, maybe that'll change after this session. Um, but I can go and I can pledge a dollar to Oprah, a dollar a week. And the key is that, that doesn't, we don't actually move money to Oprah until she asks us to do so, right? So when Oprah comes on and uh, you know, connects, sets up a GitHub account, then we'll start moving money. But you can pledge to people ahead of time, right? So for example, this is Linus Torvalds, and he has five people ready to give to him uh, should he ever choose to join GitHub, okay? Now, all right, but that's, that's a GitHub account. What's that? You're gonna charge the big lot, like if someone waited four years. No, to get him no, that's, yeah. So the question is, uh, do you get charged for, is it, do you get charged retroactively, right? So if uh, Linus has been on here for four years, is everyone, is, are all those five people gonna get charged for the past four years once he shows up? And the answer is no. So Linus is leaving money on the table right now, basically, right? Um, right, so that was a GitHub profile on GitHub. GitHub, of course, has individual accounts. They also have organization accounts. So this is an organization, a GitHub organization on, on GitHub. This is the Python organization on GitHub, which I believe is the PSF, right? And you can see what it does is it links you down to the individual members of that organization um, to set up this to them. All right, so that sets us up for this one, which is kind of fun. This is the GitHub organization on GitHub on GitHub, okay? So there's 19 of us that are building GitHub together, and this we have a GitHub organization because that's what we use to uh, do our developments, all open source, and this is the Git, GitHub page for that organization, which is kind of like, okay, so this is showing you the, yeah, so this is the GitHub organization on GitHub, right? Which is kind of like the Wikipedia page about WikiLeaks, okay? <laughs> Or maybe it's more like this page on the WikiLeaks wiki about the Wikimedia Foundation lying about Wiki News. So, you know, that's not confusing at all, right? I don't know. The Git Tip organization, GitHub organization on GitHub on GitHub. The point here is that GitHub is funded on GitHub. So, unlike, it's got, so the whole thing, yeah, so. There's no, we don't take a cut off the top, right? So when you set up a gift to someone, we charge you barely enough to cover the credit card fees, uh, but we're not taking a cut of the throughput on the system uh, for GitHub itself, for the company itself, right? So for example, this is employee number one of GitHub. Uh, this is Jonas Bergius, and he has access to your data on, on GitHub because he has access to uh, the Heroku account where we're hosting this, right? So he's an employee of GitHub, and I don't pay him anything. He's on there uh, along with the rest of us, uh, and the idea is that GitHub is funded on GitHub, right? So obviously he has a day job besides GitHub uh, right now because we're still growing and bootstrapping. Um, you know, so this is another fellow, this is Paul, and he does a lot of work on the Aspen web framework, which is the Python web framework that GitHub is built with. And this is Nick Sargent, who did a lot of work on the front end for us recently. Uh, this is Lindy Palmer, who's doing a lot of marketing work for us. And here's yours truly. So I'm not making any money from you know taking a cut. I'm out there with everybody else. So GitHub is funded on GitHub. Uh, 
Yeah, so the goal is really for people, the goal with GitHub is for people to actually make a living on it, you know, uh, and for this to be really a way for open source software to get written, right? So the idea is people working on open source software, let's have the community come together and support them to build the tools that we all depend on. That's the idea with GitHub. GitHub is funded on GitHub. All right, why? Any questions about what GitHub is at this point? All right, so operational expenses, we're paying Heroku 70 bucks a month, which is a little too much, but they just gave us a gift card. And <laughs> thank you, Kenneth. Um, and then we're paying, uh, we're paying Sentry, Get Sentry for error logging, and I do pay GitHub a little bit too. You know, so it's like 100 bucks a month, it's low. Yeah, and then we do pay for, uh, so our payments processors, processors balanced payments, and uh, yeah, so we do pay them. It's about 70 bucks a week. It's running about 70 bucks a week. How many man hours are spent on getting? I'm working full time on it, more or less. Uh, you know, uh, and then <laughs> between the rest of those 19, um, People are, people are basically working on projects at a time, you know? I don't know, I don't have a, a solid answer for you to say this number of hours. There's probably like one and a half full-time equivalent working on GitHub right now, between all those 19, if I were honest. Any other questions at this point? Yeah. Who pays for the infrastructure? Okay. So the, the question was, if you, uh, who pays for the infrastructure? Um, so when you tip to somebody, we upcharge. When you give to somebody, we upcharge. Uh, you know, so if you're tipping a dollar, you know, if you're tipping $10 total on GitHub, then we're gonna charge you $10.60. And that 60 cents, excuse me, that 60 cents is gonna cover all of those operational costs and the people get the face value of, of your gift to them. Does that answer that? Exactly. Yeah, so, so the non-payment uh, processing fees are covered by f additional fees on the payment processing at this point. All right? Yeah, let's go through this. All right, so companies. Why, why get it? All right, so this is a company. This represents a company. I love companies because companies produce really awesome stuff, right? Companies are like, are the best thing that we've come up with to, uh, to make stuff, right? So like Apple hardware doesn't fall out of the sky. It comes from a lot of hard work and a lot of concerted effort. And you know, companies are sort of this uh, way of organizing our work that's turned out to be super productive. So companies are awesome because they're super productive, right? But companies are kind of, uh, kind of opaque, right? So that's, that's what's represented here. This is, you know, there's a clear inside and outside. There's a clear boundary uh, around a company, right? So you're either hired and you're inside or you're not hired and you're outside, right? So companies are kind of like, you know, they're a black box, right? Which you would naturally represent with a white circle. <laughs> Over here we have open source projects. Okay, so an open source project, uh, is characterized by transparency, right? By transparency, by openness, by an emphasis on personal autonomy, right? Like anybody can show up to an open source project and contribute, right? Uh, and they've also shown great promise at being productive too, right? So we have all these great programming languages and all these great developer tools um, because of the open source process. So the open source process has really proven itself uh, with developer tools. And so the question that I have is, can we bring these two together? Can we have the best of both worlds and bring together companies which are so productive with open source projects which are so transparent and uh, humane? And can we have something that uh, that does both of those, right? So GitHub is organized as an, what I'm calling an open company. So this is kind of my, um, 
my take on it. So GitHub is an open company, meaning we share as much as possible, right? So all the source code's out there, and I try and have all the conversations I can online publicly. Uh, you know, so I share as much as possible, but I don't share everything, right? Uh, like only Jonas and I have the database password, for example, right? So you share as much as possible. You charge as little as possible, but again, you still charge something, right? Because you still have your own cost that you have to cover. And then the third thing is you don't pay your employees. So this is how I define an open company. And it's sort of um, part of this bigger conversation around open business. Uh, so open business is trying to apply open source insights more broadly uh, in the business world, right? Um, how, how can we build our products uh, using open source insights and how can we tweak our business models using open source insights? So there is this whole conversation on open business, and GitHub is really designed to be a way to further that conversation, both in the way that it's set up as an open company, but then also it's supposed to be this economic platform to enable new, uh, new ways to organize ourselves, right? So GitHub is funded on GitHub. Is an open company funded on itself? Uh, you know, there's, and, and the idea is that open source can be funded in this new way, directly crowdsourced, sustainable, uh, you know, by the community of people that are using it. So we're trying to apply open source insights uh, to wider domains, right? We're actually having an event um, on Wednesday, next Wednesday, with uh, Balanced Payments. So Balanced is our payments processor, and they've really gotten on board with uh, this open business vision, which is really exciting to see. So we're in what we're calling an open partnership. They actually contributed the code to GitHub to integrate with Balanced, right? So they're all up in my repo, I'm all up in their repo. They're, uh, they're a YC company, and they're here in San Francisco, and they're doing payments sort of uh, full stack, you know, everything from bringing credit cards in to depositing uh, bank accounts next day and same day bank account deposits. So they're our payments processor, and we're having this event at their place next Wednesday. So if you are interested in open business stuff, you're welcome to join us. Uh, we're co-sponsoring that as WOTC and Trovebox and Mozilla's uh, Web Forward Accelerator, as well as uh, Balanced and, and GitHub will be there. So that is uh, March 20th, next week. So would you say you have an open relationship with Balanced Payments? Heck yeah. Absolutely. The question was whether, we, uh, whether GitHub would say that we have an open relationship with Balanced. We actually, it was funny, so we had a ticket right when Balanced showed up. Uh, we were also talking to Dwala. You know, and so we were, so there was this moment where we were like, all right, uh, you know, basically the balance folks were like, sure, Dwala, come on aboard, you know, big party, let's all do stuff together. And Dwala sort of fell off. They didn't want an open relationship, they wanted exclusivity. Yeah, they wanted to be exclusive. Exactly. What questions do you guys have? This feels like boring. What do you want to know about GitHub? Yeah, right here, sorry. Dave, is it right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, do you have somewhere on the site where you show, um, okay, these, are, these are the bills we can pay for hosting support? I haven't published that yet. The question is do we have a place, do we publish our financials on the website? Is that fair? Okay. Yeah, um, I'm not publishing the financials on the website yet. Uh, I, do we have a, I think I have a ticket about that. Yeah. I can show you afterwards. We'll do it this afternoon. We'll do it in the sprint. Plus one for that ticket. Yeah, back here. Go to conferences. The question is how to get more visibility and how to get more people involved. Um, yeah, uh, conferences are a big one. It seems to grow community by community, you know? Um, so the Python community is, is the community in which GitHub has gotten the most traction so far. Uh, you know, but I also participate in Ruby and JavaScript and other things like that. And then beyond programming too, it really, it's supposed to be for anybody, for musicians, for artists. Um, I don't know, do you have ideas? Awesome, thanks man, <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, okay, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, Brent, you had yeah, earlier. Okay, so the most you can give to any one person right now is $24 per week. And Brent is asking how committed are, are we to keeping that cap. Um, the reason that that's there is 
uh, to dampen volatility in the system, right? So you want to depend on GitHub uh, week to week and month to month to pay your bills, right? So it's no good if somebody is giving you half of your support and then they disappear for whatever reason, right? Uh, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I can't pay my bills. So that's the reason to have to cap it, right? Um, I, I, I imagine, I don't, I don't know if there's a ticket for this yet, but the idea I've had is to make that algorithmic at some point, you know, so it's a percentage of your total or something like that. You know, so the more, you, uh, the more you're receiving, the higher an individual gift could be or something like that. Um, so I'm open to tweaking it, but not, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I want to preserve that uh, dampening volatility principle. Does that answer your question? Yeah, Eric. Yeah, you mean get it, I assume. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, for those of us who love it, as soon as we see it, it seems like everybody should get it. Um, yeah. So I, I expected a bigger crowd. Um, are, you, are you getting criticism, or are you just building on this thing? So the question is, why aren't there more people in this room? And uh, am I getting criticism or building an audience slowly? Are you getting criticism or building an audience What's that? Oh, okay. He's with saying everybody went to Instagram instead. I don't know. So, sorry, did I get your question? Are you getting criticism for the model? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, we do get tons of constructive criticism, uh, you know, and I try to take that on board. Um, I see it growing slowly, you know. I see it, you know, I don't... It's a slow growth and slow decline. It's designed to grow slowly and to decline slowly, right? Uh, so it's really, hard. it's really a barrier to make it recurring. And you know, everybody wants one-time gifts, which we'll get to eventually. And uh, you know, it's 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 hard for the system to grow, but by the same token, it's hard for it to shrink. That's how it's designed to work, right? Because you know, for example, uh, let me see. Is there a way to get back to it? You know, so our, our growth curve shows that. So over the past, uh, you know, six months in, in the fall, between when I started quitting my job and when I finished quitting my job, you know, get it, uh, you know, basically flatlined, except for the people dumping stolen money into get it. That was fun. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we had people show up and start testing GitHub uh, to use to validate stolen credit cards, and we flagged that. And okay, so people would show up to GitHub and use a stolen credit card to inject money into the system, and then also set up a, an account on the far side to withdraw most of that value out. Right? Uh, some of that actually was given to innocent bystanders. You know. So I got like 20 bucks of stolen money or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, we ended up refunding all of that. And I've been finding out that as chargebacks, I won't get into chargebacks, but if you know what chargebacks are, as those have been hitting, uh, we haven't gotten one yet that hasn't already been refunded. So now uh, we basically got hit pretty early on. I mean, it's the name of the game when you're moving money. You know, uh, you know anti-fraud is, is a huge part of your work. Um, so we, you know, we started taking steps. So now there's a dashboard. So every time, you know, there's an anti-fraud dashboard. So I review all accounts. So when you put a credit card on, I go and I look at your account and check out your Twitter account and check out your GitHub account. And you know, if it looks shady, I say, let's wait on this. Yeah. Is that answering that? The question uh, was to explain more about uh, the fraud that we saw last November. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Um, yeah, sure, man. Easy. Awesome. Yeah. Um, the question was, have, uh, to what extent have we connected with communities outside of open source and, open, and programming? Uh, a little bit, but it hasn't taken off. Uh, you know, I think I... <laughs> I like I, I buttonholed R. Stevens at XOXO and forced him to sign up at gunpoint, and so he's on there and he's getting like a dollar a week or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so the, yeah, that's that's a perfect use case for it. Um, yeah, and the more that you build, the more people that do that, right? Going back to the one with Linus, right? Like if there's 20 people ready to give, then you know you go tell them and they check it out, and, and that's how it grows, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so JJ's question is, uh, is it too limiting to only focus on Twitter and GitHub, right? Those are the only two, you have to have a Twitter or GitHub account to use GitHub right now, and you can only pledge to people who are on Twitter and GitHub. So, right, so the goal is to, uh, to blow it wide open um, and have, be able to tip tons of different stuff, right? Give to tons of different stuff. So. And this is the wrong venue for this, but we're actually pretty close to landing RubyGems integration. So RubyGems.org is going to have uh, GitIp links on all of their gem pages and profiles, right? And uh, and we should do the same for PyPI, perhaps. You know, so we are looking to. But you were maybe asking more about Face. Yeah. So Facebook obviously is is the big one. Uh, we'll get there probably. I'd guess in a year or so. I mean, there's enough. Kinks to work out, and there's enough, uh, you know, Twitter's a big enough pond for us right now. So that's not, I don't think that's our bottleneck. Uh, but if you want to implement it, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Flatter, the, they're, uh, we're frenemies, you know, they're, they're like, they're, they're the closest, they're like right next door, right? Um, so the, the, to be brief, Flatter is not an open company. That's the core difference, right? So Flatter uh, took some VC money, so their hands are tied in terms of their business model, right? So they've, they've got to take a cut off the top, and they're not funded on themselves. So I see that as the crucial core difference that plays out in various ways. Yeah, yeah, back here. Laser. You, yeah, OK. <laughs> Okay, the question is, we talk about being an open company, but what is our corporate structure? Uh, we're an LLC in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I have a follow-up to that, which is, have you, I feel like this is sort of a project in and of itself, and it's reasonable to stop successfully, but have you ever considered being a cooperative of the organization or a co-op? So the question is, uh, have we considered being a co-op? I actually helped start an organic uh, farmers co-op. Uh, 10 years ago, and so that was certainly part of the background for this. Uh, and we actually, so you can use an LLC legal structure to be a cooperative uh, in addition to the actual cooperative legal structure, and that's how we did it back in the day when we used an LLC. You know, that's a, that's a possibility. Uh, the difference I see between open companies and cooperatives is that uh, cooperatives are, you know, technically they're organized for the benefit of their members. Right, and uh, I, see, you know, get up the LLC, the small core at the center of that open company circle. Right, uh, we're not there for the benefit of me and Jonas. You know, it's for the benefit of, of the world. Right. Yeah, you, there's there's ways to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here and then over. Um, okay. Well, it's an LLC. Was, the question is why an LLC and not a nonprofit. So it's an LLC because. Uh, <laughs> because I recycled an LLC that I already had. Um, the reason it's not a nonprofit is because I'm trying to toe this line between, dude, because I want to be, um, I, because I want, I want GitHub to be up here with Google and Apple and Facebook and all the big corporations that we use to organize our work right now. And, you know, I mean, corp uh, nonprofits obviously do lots of great work. Um, my own feeling on it is, uh, you know, I have worked for nonprofits, and I feel like nonprofits are sort of in this uh, dependent position, you know, and I don't want to be dependent on corporations. I want to be an equal at the table. Is that answering that? Ben, you were, had your hand up. Yeah, I was just curious how, um, how your structure works in terms of decision-making. Uh, how many steps Yeah, uh, so the question is how decision making works uh, with GitHub as an open company. And it's, uh, you know, practically speaking, it's run as an open source project uh, at, this, at this point. The, it, there's some questions with how to bring in people like Lindy that I put up there uh, who do more marketing stuff, right, and aren't familiar with GitHub. And uh, it's just culturally not the tools that they would use, IRC, you know, for example. Um, so still trying to figure that out, you know, if Google Hangouts or whatever is going to help more with that. Um, yeah, but it's run pretty much as an open source project, decision wise. Yeah, over here. Yeah. Yes. Woohoo! Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm 
Okay, it isn't complicated. I mean, you sign up, you click Twitter or GitHub, and you do the OAuth dance, and then you click one dollar, and then you click credit card, fill out your credit card, and that's it. So for receiving, all right, so receiving funds, Thank you. Um, so the question is, it seems like it might be complicated, and what are the practical, how do you actually do this? How much time do we have left, Maddie? Are we done? Okay. Um, thank you. There's a GitHub booth in the... you want to just answer the question now? Okay. Can I do that? You're not going to shoe me off yet? Do you, where's your shepherd's crook? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so to receive, if you're in the U.S., you put in a bank, uh, your uh, bank numbers, your routing number and your bank account number, and you verify your identity with balance. So that's one form, and then it automatically deposits every Friday uh, in your bank account. Right now, you know, a big need is to uh, pay out outside the U.S. That's something we're working on. Uh, Balanced, our payments provider, is, uh, is working on it for us, and I'm handling that manually via PayPal now. So you can get paid outside of the U.S. That's uh, uh. tax-wise is really interesting. It's it's it, we're positioning it as gift uh, as a gift. We'll find out. <laughs> thank you all for like coming out. Thank, Appreciate it. Thank Chad Whitaker. Chad Whitaker. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, if people do have more questions, Chad's still here. He's not going away, so yes, come and talk to him. Let's do it. Uh oh.